What's up, guys? Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Inside the Lines. Happy NBA playoffs play in, whatever you want to call it. But the time is here, and I, for one, am very excited about it. We'll go through some of our props we had that we've been giving out through the early week and long Friday, and then we got some MLB for you. We got some college baseball as well. So grab your pen and paper. So there's a lot to get through today. Uh, let's bring in the boys here. We don't have much time to banter here, so we're going to get right into it. Let's talk about the model. Steven, let's go over to the first game of the night. Uh, the Lakers headed to New Orleans here. I got some plays here. These are my two These are my two boys that I've been betting all right. on all season. But before we get there, let's talk about – let's recap some of the stuff we've gone over this week too. Yeah. So the game – the line steamed um, – it started as a kind of a pick em slightly tilted Lakers. Now it's back to New Orleans. It's coming back to pick them. I think Anthony Davis, his official questionable tag is scaring some people. Um, and, uh, but I think that the Lakers, this, this was surprising to me. LeBron's over on points that we talked about yesterday did not steam up. In fact, I think he had a minus one Oh five. So I was wrong on that one. Thankfully, this one did steam up. I think you can't get plus money on 13 and a half anymore. Uh, so mm -hmm. the value has kind of gone there. Not an official pick anymore. Zion, this one got went up two points in the last 36 hours, and so it's not a great value. We still like, I still like the over, but I, I don't love it as much. Mm -hmm. This is the one that I think, uh, you know, this is our guy. Oh I, yeah. <laughs> and 22 and a half just seems, is, is is the line's too low. I mean, it's obviously three under his season average. Uh, starters tend to get more minutes in the playoffs, not less. Uh, the model has good value on all three prop lines of points, assists, and rebounds. I was tempted to go just with assists because that's the best value. But then this one brought me back to earth where since the All-Star break, my worst, my second most popular pick was an assist over. And I was my worst uh, pick. So yeah. I will stay well, away from that. Well, let's go back to that screen for a second here because this is roughly around um, the All-Star break kind of showing yeah. – some yeah. peaks and valleys, but nonetheless, I mean, we're, we're making yes. money. Yes, so we're hoping that, look, this time of year, fewer games. You can really watch every game. You can really know what's going on. It's, it's easier to keep track of everything. Um, I don't think you're going to have the days. There's just not enough quantity to go have like a, a 10 and 3 day. At the same time, you should you should waffle between – one and three and three and one as a as, as the ranges so what we're hoping to see is the overall trend line which is steady improvement um uh, understanding we're not going to have these massive runs necessarily of like plus 800 in two days but hopefully we won't have these minus 1000s in three days that that, that we've gone through that was crazy you know yeah. what made us better <laughs> Right, um, but back I, to the show. Yeah, so I'm going to let's see. Austin Reeves, again, simple. I'm not going to overthink it. 27 and 13 over on the road, 55 and 27 for the season. Yeah, he's a little bit of buy low value on his last seven, but I like that. That, you know, he keep on the last game at New Orleans, and they didn't travel. Like the Lakers just stayed in New Orleans. So they knew if they won, they'd be, be there again. Uh, there's a chance they could be there again. So no travel time, nothing on that wear and tear there. I forgot to put my headphones in. Does my uh, audio sound a little better now? It sounds fine that. to me. Yeah, I don't listen to anyone else. I just listen to myself talking. So you know, you yeah, can, you could be singing something. You know, I don't. I just tune everyone out. It's all about me when I'm talking. Uh, all right, Russell. Well, I'm gonna stop you yeah. there, there before we get to your other pick because there are some picks uh, that make sense to go over right now. Yeah. Jake was giving out the LeBron triple double here, um, not as official pick, but plus 500 at ESPN makes me go do Jake's pick here. Um, it's an interesting play here over at DraftKings. Le LeBron plus Zion. Um, to score over 52 points here, I 52 like plus, I should say. Yeah, I was looking at 55 plus two, I think that, or 54 plus is plus 130, and then it keeps going up, but 52 or more at even money, uh, we have, what, I'm at money for 56, just yeah. about. So we have four points of value here. I have a feeling one of them is going to go off with Ron and to go off in the playoffs. And he's going to, both players should have, the ball in their hands a lot. They're all going to play. Uh, they're both going to play a ton of minutes. So um, if even one of them goes off and one of them has 40 points, the other just needs 12 for this to hit. It's 52 plus, so 52, and you hit this as well. I love that, Jake. I'm yeah. stealing it. That's mine. <laughs> nice. That you can be part of with someone, uh, something else? Yeah. yeah. I can put that in my playoff party. They're welcome, yeah. LeBron and Zion. Um, all right, another question in the chat here while we're at the model is looking at LeBron and his assist, assist. line set at nine. 
Yeah, we only projected 8.7 because he had a massive – he had 13 assists in the first half, I think, of the – on Sunday. So, yeah, and he's – I just think that LeBron is going to be more scoring mode LeBron, especially if AD is slowed down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. And then was that just the Russell play? Yeah. Just a pointing out that again, yeah. um, just uh, my, my humble brag of showing that chart of tremendous profits, but humbly saying this is sucked. Yeah. but no, the model like has this. a lot of value on DeAndre Russell. I mean, he averaged a, almost seven a game on the road. He looks to pass first on the road. And so really strong overtrends. So if you are bold, bolder than me, go with D'Angelo Russell at plus money over five and a half. I gave it out on Twitter as my last play. Good. Um, all right. Let's see if we have any other questions in this game. I don't think so. As far as just the normal spread and lean, I feel like we haven't really even talked about that yet, um, where we stand on this game. We're yeah, about we, like, props. we like the – Pelicans. I mean, in the end, we lean the model as a one and a half, two point difference in the Sims. So that's not enough to put anything real down uh, on it. We do it. So, in, like in the New Orleans, we have 50.3% favorites to win the game. So, again, uh, it's not not too much, uh, not, not enough mm-hmm. confidence there on any line. We would lean under, but that line steamed, come down under two or three, two and a half, three points, despite the public being heavy on the over. So that's interesting if the smart money, which I guess we are part of at this point, um, likes the under. Right. Um, uh, while we're at it here, I think it's a good time to bring up uh, my little graphic that I made for myself. Mm-hmm. My new little trend going through uh, the playoffs here will be my playoff prop party. But since this is the play in games, we're calling it the pregame. Okay. Today and tomorrow is the pregame. Then we'll get into the good stuff as the playoffs unfold. Uh, Austin Reeves, we've obviously talked about. I will a uh, little nod to Derek here. Austin Reeves versus the Pelicans this season, averaging 21 points per game. Um, that seems awesome for this PRA. Thank you, Derek, for the stat. Going to our boy Trey Murphy. Need I say more? I know he averages less with Ingram on the floor. However, it still is over this number at 14.3. So take that for what you will. And he's gone over this in seven of his last eight. And I like that the most recent game was the low. So we're getting a little bit of a buy low spot. He only had 11 points, but I will take that. I think we can get to 13 here. This might be my last chance to bet on both of my boys in the same night. So had to do that while I could. Also love the Russell play, gave that out on Twitter. So with that said, let's move on to the next game here. We'll head over to the Warriors Kings game. Uh, I don't have as much. Many opinions or emotional attachments to these players here, so I'm going to let you guys take yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, there weren't as many good values in, in there. It, it, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, it's interesting that the line, our sim line went from Sac- Golden State minus one to minus four because Gary Payton Jr. is out. Gary Payton the second. Uh, not to say he's a bad player, <laughs> but he's. Uh, we've all talked about it in terms of the numbers that move the model against this matchup versus Sacramento. He was, His absence is a, is a positive. This value is going away. I think uh, 18 and a half at minus 110. We still, I would still take the over because we talked about yesterday. He doesn't, he tends not to get 18 or 19, he tends to get 15 or less or 20 or more. Uh, mm-hmm. But I still like that. This one's kind of gone. Could put 10 and a half rebounds and assists. Uh, it wasn't nine and a half when we brought yeah, it up. Yeah, that was big. That was this probably one, one of our most steamed ones, I feel like. Yeah. That and Zion. Well, this one stinks too because uh, I was. I'm going to count this if he has 19. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's unethical. I had 18 and a half, and God damn it, I'm getting it. But now it's 19 and a half at plus 100. Um, and last time this happened to me at this exact number, I believe maybe Mundell Carter, where he where he finished with 19, and I had 18 and a half, and I changed it to 19 and a half because that's what it was by Showtime. He got 19. So that's it. I'm counting 18 and a half. Sorry. Okay, it's on record. Not to be all angry about it, but no one did anything to me. Yeah, Matt. damn, this is a party, okay? Calm down. Uh, Big Cheesy will be boots on ground there tonight. Uh, uh, you can get 18 and a half on Kaminga at minus 122 on FanDuel right now. Okay. All right. But it's still not good because it was minus 105 or whatever. Now it's minus oh. 120 at 18 and a half. Shut up. Right. Whatever. It's all the same. No, it's I'm not. putting my low of juice 18 and a half i don't care what anyone says all right well who do we have any uh new bets that we like in this game other than kaminga here you know um De'Aaron fox again we have an assist over 
He had a lot of assists in the playoff series last year. We're projecting over nearly seven, I think, but his line is up to six and a half, which is well over his season average. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, our odds makers included, are expecting him to get a decent number of assists, but we still have value on that because I think you get plus money on that. Uh, Sabonis triple double is always interesting as long as it's plus 200 or better. Someone was looking at that, yeah. Um, you know, Kia, what did I say it was yesterday? I said it would get on it like plus 280, right? I'm pretty sure yesterday. it was plus 280, yeah. Yeah. The other day, we successfully shamed Harrison Barnes into getting uh, when he was at an th- insultingly low three and a half rebounds and assists. Uh, he had uh, he cruised through that in the first quarter, I believe. Um, I don't know if his lines his line is now um, way up, just his rebounding line alone. So it went from last Friday, I believe it was three and a half at like minus one thirty, minus one twenty, and now it's five and a half minus one hundred three. So the the value is not there anymore. Um, which is why you should watch our show every day. <laughs> yeah. you, get that. Um, you know, the other side, I, I'm Kaminga. The thing that worries me is what happened was I think the odds makers priced him as if this is the playoffs are going to go back to the big three with Wiggins because they've done it before. And Kaminga will go back to being a sixth man, even seventh guy. Um, but I think he's done enough this year to warrant, you know, if not his usual minutes, uh, closer to 30 because before, prior to this game, prior to the last game where he didn't score in their final game against Utah, but that was, you know, that's the final game. He was 15 and five over the final 20 games, but we'll see. It'll be interesting if, if they don't trust him in a got to have it situation. I was looking a lot at a uh, Keon Ellis. I almost took uh, either a point prop or his three point prop. Yeah. He He's seems uh, like he kind of has to produce offense here. He does, and the problem is I, in this midst of 26, 17, and 13, I was watching the five. And so I was turned off by that five-point outing uh, that scared me off of that. And we're not projecting value on that. And Davion Mitchell has been with the team longer and has seemingly gotten more shots recently. He's had double-digit field goal attempts off the bench mm-hmm. uh, in, in recently. So Yeah, who's, I, our, uh, who's our new Malik Monk? Who's replacing That's him? what I'm saying. It looked like Davion Mitchell because they're both good defenders, and Mitchell's got a really great reputation as a defender, mm-hmm. and and he's been shooting it confidently, if not a high percentage, at least with confidence. Yeah. Uh, recently, I see the chat talking about Draymond here. Um, interesting to see if he's get well, he's able to get through a game without a tech. That was my part of my calculus with Kaminga. I said there's still a there's a real measurable chance that Draymond still loses it. Right. Enough to, you know, enough to make Kaminga, you know, get 30 minutes. We'll say he does stay in his rebounds and assists or points and assists line, excuse me, set at 13 and a half. Um, we if like we that. think he can stay emotionally stable through this game, do we like this? A lot of value there. We have 15 and a half rebounds and assists. I points and assists, points and assists. Yeah. I and mean, points the and bar, assists have been a strong. The, yeah. That's what the our bar is so numbers. low. The fact that we are just worried that in a, win or go home game we don't know if he can even make it through yeah the whole well, game. he stomped on sabonis's chest so oh was, yeah <laughs> that's a play and we hear about it on his podcast tomorrow yeah, yeah. Night, yeah. right after the game finishes yeah to tell us yeah. what went through his mind i don't think he's learned many lessons time away yeah i've gathered that myself um yeah can't figure everyone out there see any more questions here trey lyles over four rebounds we have him at right at four. I wasn't sure if his larger role down the stretch would continue in the playoffs or not. There were some signs, you know, he was getting these like 25, to almost 30 minutes. And then the last three is 15, 15, and 19. So I was wondering if that was a harbinger of something a little less. But, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't it depends know. depends on the minutes you think he's, he's going to get. Well, we have him 19 at three points. Yeah. If he goes so back to 25 minutes. If he gets minutes. 20 plus, yeah. If you think yeah. he gets 20 plus, if you have any intel, right now I'd stay off just because. And, and maybe Sabonis gets some uh, some some foul trouble or something like that. Could could get some more minutes for him. I was saying in the chat that it was interesting because yesterday at the show we we're looking at Sabonis triple doubles and Vandal had the best price at plus two eighty. Now they have the worst price of any major book at plus one eighty. Wow. So I guess the, the Vandal moles have been watching our show. <laughs> yeah, we we don't have a large audience, but we have an influential one. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what we are. Um, all right, I don't see too many other questions actually in the chat 
Uh, God forbid we're not running out of time here. So me and Jake yeah. might head over to baseball as Good. Stephen will send you to answer right. some of the other questions as well. Um, all right, let's take a look. We got some college and some MLB today. We'll start in the MLB. We'll go with Seattle, Cincinnati here over seven runs. Yeah, it's just we have nine runs being scored in this game. It's just such a low number that, I mean, in, yeah, yeah, it you, still got, you still get push insurance at seven. But Hunter Green hasn't necessarily been – Great, he gave up six runs in this last start, and Seattle scored seven runs yesterday. Finally, got a bit of a slump. I was looking at uh, Seattle over three and a half runs at plus one hundred, so I don't mind that play either. It's say like the same line as this, but if they score over three and a half, they score four, and I, they, I mean, I, I like the seven just for the push insurance there as well. So, um, I mean, we have, I think. It's getting close to nine and a half runs, and so we have a ton of value. I know uh, it was a uh, hard rock. I had six, even money, six, too. Yeah, it was over six and a half and minus 130 on hard rock this morning, and I just like the push insurance here. And, I mean, Logan Gilbert, he's definitely hittable at times. Unless he has his stuff working, He's he could be very much hittable. So I'm surprised the lines at seven, not eight. I, I would expect this to be a eight. Tricky, tricky. You never know. Makes a little too See, much The books, sense. yeah, exactly. The books know something here. That's like Trey Murphy, but I'm riding with it anyway. Mm-hmm. It's going out with the boys that I started this season with. I th- anyway. As long as, long as Jonte Porter's not hitting for Seattle, I think we should be good. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the Braves here, playing the Astros. A nice, uh, nice Hollywood matchup here, I'd call it. Looking at the pitcher for the Braves. Yeah, so this is a funny play because I went with the exact opposite of this play last time. I went over 15 and a half outs in his last start, uh, which did hit. So, But now we're fading him. He's gone six innings in both of his starts, and he's only given him one run all season. So he's due to get hit hard by Houston, who hasn't been great. They scored one run yesterday. But uh, I think if he even gets through the lineup twice, I don't think they're going to get the, – the Braves aren't going to let him get to the Astros the third time. So – I, I think five innings is probably his limit here. And it was minus 155 on a lot of books, but minus 125 on Bet Rivers when I got it an hour ago. Hopefully it's still there for all of you guys. Shout out Bet Rivers. Shout out Bet Rivers. Um, okay. Brewers money line hosting the Padres here. Slate, slate. I guess home underdogs in this spot. Exactly. Home underdogs. The Brewers have been really good this season. And you get them at plus 108. And we hit on Wade Miley at plus money for an 8-bit last week against Cincinnati. And um, I just like the Brewers um, at plus money with Wade Miley against the Padres, who are up and down all season. You never know what Padres you're going to get. The Padres got the win yesterday, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how Wade Miley pitches. He was really good in his first start of the season last time. Let's see if he carries it over, but I'll take the risk at plus money here. Mm Mm-hmm. We like a little plus money play. I like how you're weaving through, taking going against your own picks. That's what a true handicapper does. You're just weaving, you're weaving through the lanes here. I like to see it. Um, okay, I think that's all we have in the MLB. We'll head over to college baseball here. It feels like it's been a quick minute here. Um, we'll go to Missouri State versus Mizzou. Yeah, so Steve and I did a big update to the college baseball database. We cleared out some things, made sure we have every single game for the last three years. And then now it's looking all good. Uh, and Steven said, if it's not looking Sorry. good, just don't tell him. Just don't tell him. So it's looking good, though. So it's looking good. And I think we're around plus 70 units on over-unders and plus 11 units on game picks, on APEX so far this season. And we have an APEX in the database on Missouri State at plus 100 versus Missouri. Slight home underdogs. Uh, that's what the, my home on midweek. It's just the trend, and we like that. And Missouri is one of the worst teams in the SEC. They did sweep my Gators, which is rough. But uh, Missouri State has some really good bats. It's all going to come down to see if their pitching uh, can hold, hold Missouri here. Speaking of trends, uh, your picks seem to have a trend here as well. Now we have Louisiana, Southeast Louisiana, under 13 and a half runs. Yeah, we hit on the Southeast Louisiana under, I, I think, a week or two ago. And um, against Southern Miss, it was. And mm-hmm. I'm going with the under here again. It's 13 on DraftKings, under 13 and a half at Hard Rock. I'd rather pay a little juice, a little extra juice on Hard Rock for this number. Um, Louisiana, they cost us last week when they lost a lot of tech. 
but they that game was two to five, or, uh, and so that game was under as well. Both teams are pitching dominant. They're pitched before back, so uh, I like to under here. Pitch before bat. Is that like lots they of focus they more prioritize? On, they prioritize pitching rather than hitting. My baseball lingo is going to be crazy by the summer. Just bring you say it pitch before hit. So, yeah, same thing. Pitch before but hit. But it's pitch before hit. So both teams focus on building up their arms rather than their their lineups. Even though, I mean, Louisiana has a really good shortstop and Kyle DeBarge, who is on my fantasy baseball team. Shout out to him. Uh, <laughs> my third place fantasy college baseball team. But uh, they have some bats, but they focus on building their pitching. Who are you playing college baseball fantasy with? Uh, a, a bunch of guys who have like the NCAA insiders, Quentin, uh, Quentin Mills. He's one of the, the, the cool follows in college baseball. Uh, Noah Benick, he's uh, he has his own show. Uh, all these Damn. diehard college baseball guys. Shout out to them. Shout out. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's get through. We got a few more picks here for college baseball. We'll head over to West Virginia covering the run line here versus Pitt. Yeah, it's, it's at minus 125 on the same price at DK. So I'm going with Hard Rock plus 105 on the run line rivalry game. Uh, backyard brawl right here. Uh, That's what West I was Virginia. thinking. I was like, why does this feel familiar? <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a rivalry. I mean, I, you will not think that West Virginia and Pitt are 30 minutes away from each other, but it doesn't sound right. But, yeah, they are. Um, I had friends go to school. I had both med school and uh, engineering school and they would get lunch all the time and, yeah. and i was like west virginia pit it doesn't make sense doesn't seem like it's next to each other but it is uh, and uh so it's a rivalry game west virginia got jj weatherholt back they've been really good and i'd rather take the run line here than the minus 175. okay okay i like that yes, value but GC, i would take that under at plus 100 i like that stuff yeah, we got a lot, of, a lot of rivalry in state games as well, too. Here we'll go to uh University of Santa Barbara versus UCLA. Yeah, UCSB. I think we would set the line closer to minus 180, minus 190 uh, versus UCLA. UCSB, I think, is just a better team, and they're at home. They have the better bats and mostly the better pitching, even though they're ace, Matt Eager. It's been bad for my fantasy baseball team, so not, not giving him a shout out. He's on the S list right now, but uh, for my uh, schizophrenic, as Stephen put it, uh, college baseball personality. But uh, um, I think UCSB is the better team. All right. And one more college baseball pick for the team here, going to Sacramento State money line versus Stanford. Yeah, this is a shout-out to our boy John, who loved fading Stanford, and I'm just going to go with him and fade Stanford here. Sac State plus 190. Uh, we have value here. So you also get plus two and a half in Sacramento State, and uh, I don't mind that as well. But I feel like Stanford, if they win, they'll probably win by so, uh, like big. But if Sac State wins, I like the plus 190. So uh, I, I think that you're getting good value there. Little money line dog. Never hurt nobody. All right, let's take a quick oh, look big at the cheesy's alma mater. Oh, that's why he's such a Sacramento king. This makes <laughs> sense. Light the beam, big cheese. Light the beam. All right. We got a lot going on here. I'll bring Steven back and we'll take a look at the recap screen in case there are any lasting words uh, before we let the playoffs officially begin. Look at this recap screen. There are a few things that we have value on. I added them um, from yesterday, MLB, college baseball. We got it all going on. Steven, what have you been chuckling at over there? I don't know. Just Jacob's weird, like, fantasy college baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. And we're the home yeah, of all of it. It's such a niche, you know. It's such a. Well, I think next week I'm gonna have to go back to the Euro League basketball, so we'll see. That's that's a good one. Yeah, I, I would do that because uh, there's you know, gonna be there will be a point where you're doing Euro League basketball. I'm covering the WNBA, and this show's just gonna be out of control. And I'm gonna retire. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, you're not invited. All right. Well, with that said. We finished with some time on our hands. We'd love to see it. We'll get here out of here early. Tomorrow we'll go over the next set of playing games here. My Philadelphia 76ers. I'll be coming up with a good playoff prop party for that game as Can well. Can we find a line of number of times Joel Embiid lands on the ground? Four and a half? Sure. Four I think and half, over I think. four and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I but there's always a chance to get there's a chance it gets hurt early and then has to sit. So that's the thing. 
That's true. It's a little know. bit like the uh, rushing yard prop for uh, what's his face, the backup running back for San Francisco. Elijah Mitchell. Uh, yeah, it's a little like that. You know, the line will be like three and a half, but it's either going to be zero or ten. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. We'll start brainstorming. All right, get your questions together for tomorrow as well. We'll be happy to answer them. Good luck with your bets tonight. We'll see you guys tomorrow.